Every time I go online, I'm bombarded with people significantly fitter and or stronger than me, performing feats of athleticism I could only dream of. And by consuming this never ending stream of fitness content, at times I've been left wondering, am I doomed to always be average? Or even worse, below average? And I bet some of you have felt that way too. With this constant social media onslaught at times left me exhausted, demotivated, and worst of all, it skewed my perception of what normal actually meant. But I eventually managed to shift the dial in my head and I grounded myself back in reality. And by focusing on a few simple measures in my training, I was able to progress from being a running and lifting beginner to being fitter and stronger than most people. And it wasn't as hard as you think. So what were these simple tricks? Well, let's find out. So these two photos are about seven years apart, in between which I went from being a skinny teenager who'd never stepped foot in a gym to a competition running powerlifter. And more recently, in the last 12 months, I was able to use that experience I had in getting stronger and adapt it to getting fitter. I've gone from being a complete beginner runner who bought his first pair of running shoes in over four years to running a sub 20 minute 5K and even winning a park run for the first time ever. These are both achievements that by definition mean I'm above average in fitness and strength terms. But despite this, I've often felt conflicted. When I look back to the time I just about passed the imaginary line of being fitter and stronger than average, I remember feeling underwhelmed with my progress and slightly demotivated in my training. I didn't recognize where I was in the grand scheme of things and could only look forwards or above me and see how I didn't match up with where I wanted to be. But right now I'm loving my training. I'm the fittest I've ever been and I'm making strides back towards my previous levels of strength. And that's all been down to me changing my perspective on what average actually means. And I'll come back to that. But first of all, let me jump into the first simple trick I use to make those leaps in fitness and strength. So I started lifting weights from about the age of 15, but it wasn't until I went to university at 18 and came across powerlifting that I started to make significant progress. Before then, I got all my information about lifting from the bodybuilders who dominated fitness YouTube in the early 2010s. So I trained five or six different exercises per muscle group with drop sets and supersets. But despite training hard for two or three years, I saw very little progress. But these powerlifters I met at university, they were the strongest people in the gym. And they were getting there all whilst training only a handful of compound lifts. Well, I followed their lead and stripped my training right back. And secondly, I stayed consistent and gradually increased my lifting volume month on month. And honestly, my strength exploded. I went from a 140 kilogram deadlift to a 180 kilogram deadlift in my first year of uni. And I made similar progress with the bench press and squat. I was now stronger than the majority of people at most commercial gyms I was going to. And I was training only three times a week. The fact of the matter was, I'd spent the first few years of lifting weights overcomplicating my training and trying to imitate elite bodybuilders who were relying on more than just hard work and chicken breast, it turned out. I'm not saying powerlifting is the only way to train. It's just this focus on a small number of compound lifts give natural lifters the most bang for their buck. So when I got into running earlier this year, I applied the same principles I'd learned through my time powerlifting. I tried to keep my training simple and stripped back. I found that by simply increasing the amount of low intensity zone two running I was doing gradually over time, I was getting significantly fitter. And staying consistent and training like this for the next six months was enough in itself to shift my 5K PB from around the 23 minute mark to sub 20 minutes. I'd gone from a non-runner to an above average one in the space of only six months. And there wasn't a magic formula. I simply turned up to each session, didn't try to overcomplicate things and stay consistent. And as a beginner, that's all you need to do to see progress and become above average. If you imagine you're on a sailing boat and your target of getting stronger and fitter than average is on the other side of the lake, while all the factors contributing towards you reaching your targets are like different streams of wind. The easiest and fastest way to get there would be if all the winds are blowing you in the same direction. So if you're training right, but at the same time missing sleep, eating a diet lacking in nutrition, overtraining and not taking recovery seriously, or nailing 15 pints each weekend with a pack of cigarettes to wash them down, well these things are all going to be counterproductive. Yeah, your training might be on point, but you're likely to be blown off course by the prevailing winds of your crappy lifestyle. And if you think that your 15 minute sweat in the sauna or a Sunday juice cleanse will reverse the effects of that poor lifestyle, well, to continue my sailing boat analogy, that's like squeezing out a small fart in the face of gale force winds and expecting to make it to your destination safely. Trust me, I've been there. Not fighting on a lake in gale force winds, the lifestyle bit. The point being, if you're serious about improving your overall fitness or strength, Consider making positive changes to your lifestyle. They're gonna help and not hinder that process. And if you're enjoying this video, please drop it a like and consider subscribing. And we're on to the penultimate tip. So I'm a firm believer that having something to train for makes you not only work harder, but helps you enjoy your training and the sport. For me, those goals take the form of entering competitions. This helped me switch my mindset from seeing running and lifting as purely for the benefit of my health or to maintain muscle mass for vanity's sake, to seeing those disciplines as hobbies to be enjoyed and opportunities to meet like-minded people. Entering my first powerlifting competition in 2018 focused my training on a specific goal, 
It made me write a training program and kept me motivated to see it through. I didn't win that first competition, but that's beside the point. I enjoyed it hugely. It gave me the motivation to enter further competitions and continue getting stronger, to the point where I even won one with a total of over 570 kilos. And when I started running earlier this year, a friend at the time invited my wife and I to do a partner's trail running event. This gave me a reason to gently increase my running mileage, with the motivation of actually being able to complete the run. And through gradually increasing my weekly mileage in preparation for this event, my Apple Watch was now telling me my VO2 max was above average, and even if I didn't know exactly what that meant, I saw this as progress. When I look back, I see that entering that event so early in my running career was really important for me. It gave me an opportunity to be around a group of people, all with a passion for the same sport and the outdoors, and that was what really lit a fire under me when it came to running. There were people 40 years older than me running for hours on this crazy trail, and it was inspiring. And there were people younger than me running laps around me, and that too was inspiring. My experiences at that event was one of the driving forces behind me starting this YouTube channel, and one of the reasons I've gone on to book four different running events for the next year, including two ultramarathons. Trust me, you don't need to go as far as that to get anywhere near above average, but your perceived ability or lack thereof should not hinder you from giving competition a go. There are other ways to set goals, of course, but I promise you, getting involved in a competition will only have a positive effect on your strength and fitness, not to mention your motivation and enjoyment for the sport going forwards. So this curve represents a spread of data around the average result. So when applied to fitness or strength levels, this is what average looks like, slap bang in the middle. And the vast majority of people fall either side of this average in the bell part of the curve. So average doesn't mean bad, it just means around the middle of the data set. And as social media consumers are used to watching content from fitness creators who are on average fitter and stronger than the regular person. So this is what the distribution of social media fitness fanatics looks like. And if you line the two on top of one another, well, there you go. So if you're someone who's of average strength or fitness, this is where you are on the graph of regular people, but this is where you are on the skew graph of fitness creators that you're most likely comparing yourself to. It's not a fair game and you're never gonna win. And this is the exact position I've struggled with over the years and what has at times left me demotivated and unhappy with my progress. But really, it's all just a matter of perspective. We're in an age for the first time in history where through our phone screens, we have access to over 8 billion other people and see what they're doing. And because of how algorithms work, the cream of the crop are far more likely to make it onto your screens than the average or even below average Joe. And leading on from that, I realized that by making this video and sharing my own experience, there'll be people out there who hear my progress and think, I could never go under 20 minutes in a 5K with only six months of training. But I also am not an average person. I recognize that I'm a pretty privileged male in his mid twenties in good health, living in a wealthy country. I'm in one of the highest performing categories when it comes to demographics. But if you wanna get a decent look at what the actual bell-shaped curve looks like, rather than the social media spread, pop down to your local gym or weekly park room. This in itself is a skewed sample in that it's a bunch of people who actually go to the gym or are capable of finishing a 5K, but it's far more realistic of what normal is than what you'll see on your phone screens. And the reality is, if you're someone who is actually making an effort to head out for a run or a hybrid walking jog, or if you're turning up to the gym even once a week, then you're likely ahead of the large proportion of adults in Western countries who are completely inactive or do no resistance training. I guess what I'm trying to say is that average is all relative and try not to compare yourself too much to others. And if you can get a bit fitter or a bit stronger from utilizing some of these tips that help me, well, that's a big win in my eyes. And being above average is likely far more achievable than you may have thought it was. If you like this video and wanna see more like it, please drop it a like and subscribe for more running, lifting and general fitness content. And I'll see you again next time.